Hello there. Uh, my name is Ryan. Hi, I'm Alex. Hey, and this is the uh, second round of Swiss from uh, West Coast U.S. Nationals uh, 2023. Um, now, uh, some of you may be here for uh, scoops, which uh, there'll be a timestamp for that. But if you want to like hang out, we're going to watch a game and comment for a little bit. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I did a couple of these games with Steven a few months ago. Uh, pretty new to commentating, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So interestingly, we have uh, Atea on the left, which is one of the new IDs, and haven't seen a ton of this competitively. Uh, on the right, we have uh, Arsana. I know uh, Tak is from the Bay Area. I'm not sure where Z is from. Uh, um, but I had a lot of fun games with Tak at uh, Cascadia and uh, LA Nationals. Oh, nice. US uh, Nationals. Sweet. Um, I uh, actually during lunch uh, at Nationals, I, I chatted a little bit with Z. I believe they said it was their uh, first tournament ever. Wow. Well, that's awesome. So, yeah, always awesome to get new people, and also piloting a like. This this is not a uh, a new player deck, so I'm assuming that this is this is somebody who knows how to play, even though they're, you know. Yeah, you got to have some familiarity familiarity with Windows for when to slap those Trojans down. Yeah, for sure. Well, I feel like often Arasana kind of uses the Trojan thing as a. a you know, some Chrome, like they're still doing basic shaper things, building towards a rig and just supporting with, you know, utility Trojans or the slap in. Yeah, it definitely lets you, uh, lets you face check early as well, that you can run into something, throw down a slap band. Yeah. So getting that Atea value. Yeah. Hitting the ground running. See a uh, Rashida, plenty of ice in hand. All right, ice, ice, two installs. It's a good open. What are we thinking for that other remote server? You've already, usually the face down thing that you're daring the runner to hit is a spin doctor, but here the spin doctor's already on the table. Rest. Yeah. All right, Z and calls it, it. Okay, we have right. a regolith. Mm -hmm. I don't know, do you trash a regolith turn one? Uh, it depends on the econ you have in hand. Maybe if I have a creative commission in hand. All right, so we get the trash. And then uh, click daily cast, or uh, credit daily cast. OK, so there's some economic recovery there. Uh, Tack didn't gain any credits on the first turn, so it definitely helps to not let him fire that regolith, even if it's a tempo hit for Z. I like these cups for all these counters. Yeah, they kind of look like uh, like um, like what you bake cupcakes in. Mm -hmm. You always risk uh, accidentally eating your tokens when you do something <laughs> like that. Yeah, very tasty. I actually do love that these are the uh, the old school tokens. They're the cardboard tokens that came with the uh, old core set, and then we have a silhouette play mat. Mm. Yeah, I also use those. Cardboard counters. I have an ancient, really beat up set mixed in with uh, wooden tokens from like a second edition risk. Oh, love it. Feels janky. All right, so we have an upgrade on the Spin Doctor. Yeah, and this continuing is... to, oh, sorry, continuing to get a Taya value. Let's see, it's not Hokusai, probably. I don't think Hokusai's been in the meta for a bit. I know some of these Atea decks are playing with like B1001. I'm not sure if TAC is on something like that. I'm All right, sure I'm so missing have... some very obvious upgrades. <laughs> we have environmental testing. Um, I could imagine like uh, Lacosta or um, uh, we have Rashida Fires. That's so good for Atea. You can just slap so many cards down. 
Yeah, that's that's a big thing about uh, like the Jintek the Jinteki card pool like just doesn't have that much card draw, and so when you're double installing every turn, it's like it's so easy to run out of cards. And their econ is fairly weak. Uh, I believe that Mindscaping is already out at this time. Yeah. Uh, but prior to Mindscaping, it was often pretty hard to get uh, good Jinteki. I guess it, it still is kind of weaker in comparison to some of the other corps. But yeah, getting a Rashida sure. Fire is so helpful. Yeah, and uh, Tattoo Bola also was a big uh, was a big boost here. Yeah. I, I would be very surprised if we don't see any Tattoo Bolas. I'm sure we're going to see plenty of Tattoo Bolas. <laughs> install do we get the second install there's so much ice in hand we've got to so z's drip is pretty strong but uh, they didn't feel comfortable enough to threaten that remote previously when it had the rashida maybe now that it's advanced or do you assume ngo uh behind one piece of ice yeah I, like I, I think Th this looks a lot like an NGO. Maybe that's what he wants you to think. <laughs> We're thinking. Yeah. Got a twinning in hand. How helpful is that resed uh, spin doctor? Uh, it can. I know it can help a lot if you're going in in some kind of like regenesis direction. Uh, you feel, you know, a lot safer dumping those points in the bin. I don't know if attack is on on that. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the tricks that Isaiah can do is if uh, if you have a moon pool and a bunch of uh, agendas in hand, you can uh, moon pool an agenda and like fast advance a four two. But you need both uh, servers to be open to do that. So. Mm be interesting to see if we uh, get a spin pop early just to free up the server. Because he takes an econ turn and still doesn't threaten the remote. Yeah, slowly getting online. We have the uh, we have the lily pad. We have environmental testing. It's like... I think that's a Kushik in hand on the left, the Trojan that gives you uh, two credits when it's passed, the whale. Oh, uh, Cubon. I'm totally sure. Cubon. Yeah. You really gonna push the Fuji right now? I was considering whether you did it, but I don't think it's a Fuji anymore. But yeah, not seeing a lot in the way of threatening these remotes. So yeah, no score. Probably, I, I'm not feeling the slow roll here. It's probably the NGO. Yeah, I don't think I'm seeing any agendas in Tax Hand though either. So maybe they're just uh, not drawing them. There's another Rashida though, so it'll get there. <laughs> yep, we just pop the NGO to free up the server. Yeah, now we know. And what's a little awkward is it looks like Tack wants that to be his scoring server, but with Atea, he's got to put the second install on the other server. But maybe he'll switch. Was that the? I'm assuming the Rashida is what went just went yeah, down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Rashida went down. Oh, and that that is an agenda. Oh, is it? Okay. So yeah, the the scoring server is uh, being taken up by the spin doctor. So. Yep. There we go. We get the early spin doctor so that they can use the server. Yeah, this is an interesting thing with Atea only having two servers, is that the sort of, like, spin, NGO, Rashida, they, like, take up one of your two spaces that you have. A lot of times one of them is, like, just camping in your uh, scoring server. I mean, so many other corps have the problem of only having one server. Uh, Atea <laughs> is, like, sitting pretty easy in that regard. That's fair. Yep. 
Yes, he twinning in hand. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that... Uh, I don't think there's any hosted credits cards for twinning quite yet. No. It could be prepaid voice pad or uh, Chesva. Yeah. I've seen a lot of Arasana with Conduit, so it is a little surprising to me to see the twinning. I'm seeing a lot of influence here, the Gachapons as well, which make yep. a lot of sense with Enviro testing. SMC goes down. So yeah, we we might see a face check here. Oh no, just a creative commission. It's such a tough call for which server to face check at this point. Is TAC installed new things in, in both remotes? Both. Yeah. Yeah, I do love that. That this is this is uh, has like flavors of shell game, even though you only have two servers still. Mm -hmm. Ah, you called it. La Costa. Just that advance, advance, like advance. Score. Yeah, here we go. This is the combo. So this is a uh, timely public release is the agenda that was just uh, scored here. So uh, timely public release, uh, it gets an agenda counter and then you can spend the agenda counter to install ice on a server. And with Atea's ability, you can install ice in one spot, and then you can install an agenda in the other server with the Atea ability. And with Lacosta, that agenda can be going on Lacosta grid and getting that free advancement. Yep. All with, so you've already got a single advanced agenda with no opportunity for the runner to interact. Yep, and it's at paid ability speed, which means you can do it like you you can do it during the runner's turn, which means that uh, Atea's drawback that you can't uh, score the card this turn doesn't matter. It's been in, it's been installed since previous turns, so you can seamless it. There's like all the sort of stuff that just combos with it. I was wrong about the Cubon. It was a slap handle. Of course. Oh, got it. This is my punishment for playing with uh, black and white proxies. <laughs> Yeah, so Gachapon for the slap. So Z says, I don't, I don't want to mess with all this uh, shell game in the remotes. So let's just go for centrals. But I didn't see legwork or. Uh, I guess there's a deep dive. I'm like trying to talk through everything so I don't forget. But with uh, that timely public release score, you really want to, you, you got to catch those agendas in hand before they go down into the remotes. Yeah. I think Tax also relatively uh, new to the game. Uh, when I played with him in Cascadia, he said he hadn't been playing for very long. I'm sure oh, interesting. by now, in March 2024, he's no longer a novice. But uh, back here, uh, I think he was fairly new. Ah, yes, that's another thing to note that uh, people might not know. So this was one of the uh, very last big events before the ban list dropped that banned um, Keeling and Dreamnet. So in this game, uh, you're actually going to see uh, Dreamnet from uh, these runners. We had a lot of back and forth on whether the ban list would be in effect or not, because it was announced, but it wasn't in effect yet. Yeah, it was within uh, two weeks of the announcement. Oh, Tachi Bull is not what you want to see on the ice that you just slap handled. Yeah, do you think uh, do you think you just bounce here? Uh, it depends on whether you have um, access to Hush. We didn't see an SMC to pull out Hush to continue the run, so it does look like a bounce. Yeah, and we're going to do our Asana install on uh, R&D. Oh, I guess that could have been... Uh, you know, in a, a paid ability window. So maybe we're still continuing in through the tattoo? Might as well run it. No, we're bouncing. No, we're bouncing, yeah. 
That's always the question with ID. Uh, if you can get a hush on there, then that blanks that Tatu Bola text, and uh, you're not going to lose your Trojans just passing right on through. But as soon as you have two Trojans on a Tatu Bola, you're just begging the Corp <laughs> to overinstall ICE and yeah, trash sure. your precious programs. This is click three, right? Yeah. It's always a little tricky to decide how to play against uh, the Trojans from Corp side, because you have this power to destroy them and clear the board. But usually, Arizona players have some, you know, a lot of simul chips, especially when you saw those Enviro testings. I would expect some simul chips here. Yeah, and like trashing your own ice, like that's that's still a win for the runner, I think. Okay, we have R&D. Right. Uh, yeah. We know res, so that Cubon is active. That is a two-credit farm. Yeah, two Blood credits and see Enigma off the top. Uh, Vernissage is down, so this Econ engine is just growing on the runner's side. And it does mean you can get the Slap Vandal back before you uh, break the Tatu Bola. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rashida Fire. No agendas? Uh, looks like one agenda, maybe? I feel like if he had an agenda, he would have put it down with time, timely public release. Yeah, um... Oh, uh, I think he drew it off the Rashida. Like you normally, like you oh, want to yeah. fire the the public release on the runner's turn. That makes sense. Is that a uh, project Yagyuda? That's what it looks like. It definitely looks like it's the ashes formatting. So yeah, I think so. Essentially, a blank three two. That one requires over advancement, I believe. I don't know if I'm totally off here. Yeah, that also looks like maybe we have an alt art seamless in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you do you install the Yagyuda behind the two pieces of ice? Because we're looking at an SMC uh, UAV is going to probably pick up the slap vandal. With Z on zero points, I would personally slap that Yagyuda down on the Lacosta grid. Uh, they already put their slap vandal on HQ. They're, they have this Trojan focus on centrals. Dare them to try to shift their focus to the remote, um, use up their resources. Yeah. And you've got you've got your timely public release ready, so like you could wait to use that, but why not risk like the lowest value? agenda. Yagyuda doesn't have any uh, any forward tempo. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think I agree with you here, yeah. And I, I think that is what happened. All right, so I think the, the install was uh, Rashida Yagyuda. And just take a credit. Well, that was only one click for the two installs and a credit. Maybe oh, a draw maybe... there? Yeah, I think there was also a draw. <laughs> yep, we get we get the slap handle back. So now if you SMC for a barrier breaker, you don't have to eat the Oh there we go. Oh, interesting. They're not using the UAV credits to install the twinning because they want them to be able to put twinning counters. Oh. They are hosted credit counters. They are. All right, and yeah, we get a run on the remote. Oh, I love it. So getting that slap vandal down is also going to charge up the twinning. Yeah, I think you're hoping for one of these to be a barrier, so that way you can get your get your fracture and also be able to get through the tattoo bola. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to see that when you're uh, 
ready for fractures and slap handles. Oh man, yeah. Uh, for okay. those who can't tell from the uh, from the alt art here, this is a Nancy. I see a uh, Ika in hand. The uh, the other Trojan, the older Trojan Century Breaker. Yep. <laughs> I believe it's it costs a lot of credits to uh, break a Nancy with it. So we got the yeah, install um, alt, then we got to pay two to host it. Okay, so that's six credits for. We've confirmed six credits. <laughs> yep, that is that is the sum to break in an onsu. That uh, Trojan finds its place in a lot of Arasana decks because it's the only Trojan, to my knowledge, that can be installed um, without uh, ice available to host on it. Yeah. I I've seen games with Arasana where you come up against a an NBN horizontal deck that has no ice and you're sitting here with a handful of Trojans. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, but Ika doesn't have to be hosted on something, so you can still install it, still get your... Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually don't Fairness know. Massage engine. Yeah. It's not optional. It's not optional. All right. This one. Okay. No res, and yeah, they they steal the Yagyuda. Saved the credits, didn't trash the Lacosta. I guess if like. your your econ is low, that makes sense, but that Lacosta is so powerful with this timely public release. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I agree. But the four trash cost is definitely intimidating. I understand being hesitant about it. There's two free credits on R and D though. There's uh, that Altart seamless, another yeah. one. Is that the third that's the third the Rashida? Third Rashida, yeah. I don't remember if Spin Doctor shuffled back uh more Rashida, like shuffled back more Rashidas, but yeah, that's that's a yeah. lot of value. One Rashida and one Regolith. Okay. Yeah, there are two more Anansis in hand. Is that two Anansis? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And Atea doesn't even have to pay the install cost to put them on top of that server, so... Oh, that's mean. <laughs> that's mean. Tax credits are a little tough to read here, but I think he's on six. I think those those blue beads are one credit each. Yeah, and I'm pretty the sure other they're ones, ones are six. Yeah, Tax's been using a different color for fives. I'm pretty sure those are those are all ones. And his kingdom for an NGO right now. If you could get an NGO down on that Lacosta, daring the runner to get through that expensive Anansi. Mm -hmm. But that is a, it's handful, just a of handful of ice, ice. and seamless. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, who's this? What's the one on top? Um, is that another Lacosta, maybe? Maybe. I think that's I... another Lacosta. And yeah, another piece of ice goes down. And even if it's not what you're hunting for, it's always still time to do a Teo shenanigans. Ooh. Okay, so the... I would really strongly consider trashing that ice and getting rid of that Cuban on R and D. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is a simul ship on the table, but you 
I think you still that's a that's a battle you have to fight. You're gonna need to trash Trojans and start taxing taxing those simul ships if you can. Okay, and I think this is a end of turn SMC pop, so that way we can get the uh, the lily pad draw on the corpse turn. And the uh, twin encounter. Yep. Potentially. Does Vernissage? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's strong. Chesva can't do that. Prepaid voice pad can't do that. Um, and then I will get the twin encounter. I will also get a lily pad trigger. Are you cutting? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely not up on the meta right now, but Thank this... Uh, I feel like I missed out on the, the whole Arisana Vernissage twinning synergy. Oh man, this is this is about to get uh the, we're we're about to have a lot more triggers uh just drew a uh Q loop. And there's still a deep dish in hand. Deep dive. <laughs> it would be a fun alt art and deep dish and have some like a picture of pizza. <laughs> Just one more slice, please. <laughs> Prognostic? <laughs> oh, man. Cubon goes on the remote, get the... For this being their first tournament, Z sure picked a trigger-heavy deck to play <laughs> and is flying high. Fortunately, that doesn't trigger Altea. Tatu Bola doing what it was born for. Tak is okay. low on credits like and uh, bouncing back with this uh, trigger. Spending some twin encounters. <laughs> get to see a couple cards on each queue. I mean, you want to. You're so afraid of that timely public release. Especially yeah, after that Rashida trigger. You haven't installed from I mean, I would expect there to be agendas here. Like, this is the thing. It's like, we, yeah. we've seen the hand. We, we know, but just... But instead, two Anansis. <laughs> Especially, okay, when your hand is flooded with that much ice, you absolutely want to be trashing these Trojans. You've got ice to replace it with. Are we go are we moving towards a deep dive? So we all I think all we have so far is the HQ run. Yeah. Looks like we're in second click though. You know, maybe it's a declared click that hasn't been enacted yet. Yeah. And we do have a pinhole, so potentially they can like we'll we'll see if they make any effort to take down the Lacosta. All right, dirty laundry on archives. Your discount legwork didn't see any agendas, and uh, attack didn't push any through last turn. I think you're starting to smell that there aren't agendas in hand. Right? If there if there was an agenda in hand, oh, and well, the, I I guess it, it still could have been off of the Rashida and still hiding in hand somewhere, and you just missed it. I didn't follow what happened with the rest of that. Oh, mm -hmm. is the turn not over? I still only see two clicks spent, but I see tack drawing. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what happened here either. Oh yeah, I guess there was a dirty laundry somewhere. Yeah, there was a dirty laundry on archives. So we saw HQ sweep. He's got to be breathing a huge sigh of relief at not seeing a off-world office or another TPR 
just slammed out here. We have another ice on HQ now that uh, there there was an agenda draw, so it looks like Tac's gonna wait to uh, to TPR this out. Decoder on the table. You're very carefully considering this res on R&D. Tax got some money now, but he's not rich, especially when there's two Anansis out here, potentially. Oh, we have a Bran. I can see why that was such a tough call. <laughs> Z can definitely afford to break the brand. Do they want to? Yeah, I don't know about that. They saw the handful of ice that can be installed with that first trigger as the next uh, ice. So you don't want to let that one fire if you're trying to push through. Okay, so slap vandal in two clicks. I assume you're con you're continuing. I am continuing. That makes sense. This is when you really want to have included poison vial in your Arasana. Yeah, for sure. We get the card draw off the lily pad. Spending the two twinning counters. Ngo, Tatubola. And a, there's Rashida. that Rashida back again. Those were some pretty key trashes. Oh, that is an agenda in tax hand, though. So I think we're going to see the uh, we're going to see the uh, TPR combo here. It's a little tough to say. Because Z is down to three credits. It's true. He's, you see Tech checking all the ice on the remote. Can, does he need to burn his TPR token to do it? Or can he sneak it out? You're probably right that Tech could just jam this and. He's thinking about it. Did you see what the agenda was? Uh, I did not, but it's on the front of his hand. It almost looks like that uh, the three four that you can't install the same turn or it can't oh, score yeah. the same turn you install it. Oh, that's so awful. TPR also gets around that. <laughs> it does. It does. It's still tempo negative, though. And Tack is only on five credits, and he just had his Rashida and his NGO trashed off the top. He's porous. It's actually not looking very good for our Atea player, I think. All right, but doesn't uh, doesn't use the uh, doesn't use the counter. Just uh, draws for starter turn. No, I feel like when you're on the back foot, you you have to take some risks. You can't burn all your resources in a conservative uh, score. Because if he if he if he scores it out with TPR, um, sure he's got the points, but now he's 
he goes down to no two money. credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against this, like, twice a turn uh, twinning. Vernissage plus some kind of off-turn install. Prognostic can do it. SMC can do it. Simulchip can do it. It's so powerful for uh, charging that twinning up twice as quickly as you would expect. Not that we see that happening this turn, but theor theoretically, we see it happening. Yeah. And this this Anansi is doing so much work here. Like, on, on six credits, it's not like Tok is threatening to res all that much ice on this four deep server, but still, like... So did he jam the agenda? Did you see what he jammed in there? I think he might. I, I think he jammed the agenda. I didn't quite see it. I mean, I don't think he had much else in hand that can go into a remote server. Yeah, the hand is, uh, it's um, a Nazi seamless seamless. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the agenda in the server. And he knows that all he's got in the other server is another Lacosta, which is um, marginal at best. He's on three credits and trying to abuse this Cuban while Tack is also fairly poor. We get our key loop trigger. You really want that to be a Tachibola that the Cuban's on. I love checking the remote server during the run on HQ. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, always uh, having to do the, the mental math of like, okay, if I res this here, can I still res that over there? Mm -hmm. Tech's joking about having eight tattoo bullets in his deck. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see where it went, but the Tattoo Bola is somewhere because it's not in his hand anymore. It's probably on the remote. Uh, we had no res on the ice that's Cubaned. Slap Vandal returns to the brand. Are we still threatening Deep Dive? I don't see it in hand. Did it get discarded? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, like, you would also have to have a, a reasonable way of breaking the brand in one click to make that happen, too. I mean, Snowball's on the table. I don't know how reasonable it is. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, trying to make good runs, but HQ is still empty. smell that as an agenda in the remote at this point? I think even if you don't think it's an agenda, you, you want to get that. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is that um, I think I, I think Z ran R&D the previous turn, so they saw they saw NGO ice Rashida, and so I think potentially that's what's happening, is they they saw the top card of R&D and just assumed that there wasn't an agenda before. They didn't draw into one, but yeah, one just sneaked through. Did the Tattoo Bola get rezzed on the second run on HQ, but not the first one? <coughs> uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, we get... Uh, 
Yeah, you called it. It's it's vulnerability audit. It's the the uh, four three. Ooh, that is very threatening. Five points. Yeah, TPR five points. token not used. <clears throat> that was a strong jam. All right, and we pop the Gachapon. I'm trying to think, like, what, like, what does, what do you get that gets you out of this? Because um, it's like you kind of have to. This yeah, TPR I is gonna. I saw a, a deep dive earlier. Um, yeah, I wonder if maybe it was off of the previous Gachapon, and maybe they removed it. Hmm. I'm not sure. At this point, your only hope uh, as Z is that you can lock R&D. If it gets into HQ, it's it's so hard to, to pluck it out before it gets TPR'd. Yeah, you exactly. need an R&D lock as a shaper here. And I wanted influence for these two, so I'm blank out too. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a, a, a pinhole in hand earlier. Like, but even if you pinhole the, um, even if you pinhole the Lacosta, they can um, Tac can still uh, TPR three two. We saw they're running Yagudas. Yep. We saw he's willing to do it. I mean, you can still do four twos with all those seamlesses we saw as well. Oh yeah, for sure. It's been interesting seeing them both kind of out of gas this whole game. Yeah, I feel like I feel like talk uh, didn't. Uh, I feel like a lot of their agendas potentially shuffled to the bottom and gave them both some amount of time to set up here. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do wonder if that means that uh, if that means that R and D density is potentially higher than you would expect. Yeah, it's not looking good for Z, but if you can get a lock here, that doesn't look like a lock. Or maybe it's just installing for, you know, triggers purposes. Oh, we, we do have the hush on the Tatubola. Excellent, finally. Ooh, but abandoning R&D. I don't think you can get out of this by just hammering HQ. Yeah, you I don't have think to, so. You have to hit the agendas. Tack can just draw them and jam them the same turn. I guess you have to hope that he doesn't have the points in hand. Well, Z is hoping the points are in hand and is attempting to prevent that win uh, off turn by Tack. <laughs> okay, doesn't spend the twin encounters, though. So potentially we're still going to see another swipe at R&D. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost? Uh, is it cost to uh, yeah, break I think brand? It's, yeah, um, I don't actually know the math on this. Let me break out my abacus. That's so awkward. That's nine credits for a full break. Oof. If you yeah, simul ship it, you're at a five. If you uh, trash it and reinstall it with the simul ship, since it gets plus three strength on install. 
Yeah, We're it's just money. Minutes in, and that's the first hedge fund of the game. Yeah, it's been it's been a weird draw from the corpse side. It's been all all Rashidas and no hedge funds. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget all the Yanansis. Oh yeah. That he can't afford, <laughs> and yet he's still on game point. This is like this is. I don't know. It feels knife fighty to me. Nobody can quite afford everything they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I will one break. Yep. Continue. Yep. Uh, We're taking another swing at HQ still. As long as Z keeps HQ clear of agendas, they're safe. Pay one for the tattoo bola, get two for the kiwan. Oh, hey, the kiwan is on an anansi. I think you feel a lot more comfortable resing that anansi currently when there's nothing in the remote, and there it is. Yeah, at least the Q1 like slightly pays you back here. <laughs> I get CRV on my yacht. It's tense. Yeah. Looking at this hand, it's like, how, how much, like, how, how sad are we to take a bunch of net damage? Apparently, Maybe. pretty sad. Yeah, pay all the credits for the eco. You're right. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was, I was considering that as an option too. But then, yeah, no, you, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, Arasana was already used for the hush, so Z doesn't have it available to play that Ika. Okay, okay, so we're breaking with Echelon instead. Looks like still not spending 20 counters. And we see the third Anansi. Now you know all those other ice are not Anansi. <laughs> that does give you information. Yeah, so much stuff in hand, but so much of it is run based. We have two more Q bonds in hand. We have uh, Peter Shao, which like gets you your click back. But theoretically, you might want to 
Oh, I was going to say you try to cut it up and you have the pinhole available to check whatever goes in the remote, but now you're just against a TPR score. You have to keep that agenda out of hand. And there it is. There's another TPR in hand. All right, so we have the other TPR in hand. Do you think you just jam it or do you think you hold it for a turn and score it at the end of the runner, uh, like uh, put it on the table at the end of the runner's turn? With how expensive HQ is, my gut says you pretend that you didn't draw it. You act like, you know, you try to draw again, or I guess he doesn't have anything else to jam. No, yeah, he's so acting like he has it. Yeah, credit, credit, credit. Still, even with the credit, 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 it, it's kind of an uphill battle for Z to pay through this Anansi and get in there. I'm not sure how many hand, how many cards Tack has in hand, but you got pretty good odds with a full twinning sweep to pick it up. Yeah, they've already run HQ like every turn up till now, though. So it's. It... Seems like a tough proposition to be like, okay, this is the turn that you should run HQ and spend all your counters. Yeah, it makes sense to hope that it wasn't drawn. You don't want to pay through that in NC again. But with the daily cast going down, it seems like that's the gamble that Z is making. Oof. Are there plot shenanigans that might be at play? I think actually, like I think this maybe beats Clot as well with the. Uh, there we go. Oh, it does beat Clot because you install it on their turn and you score it on your turn. Yep, different turn as well. Yep. All right, that's the game. There's the deep dive. Yeah, you found it. <laughs> There's the deep dive in here. <laughs> I swear I saw one earlier. Yeah, my guess is what happened is uh, we, we saw it off the gachapon and maybe they shuffled it back in. Yeah, I think he, again, needed an R&D lock. And with that brand pulling so much weight on R&D, Arasana just doesn't have a good way to get through it. Yeah, so much of the ice that was rezzed here was like so, so taxing. It was brand and Anansi and Anansi. And... Yeah. All right, so I think before we get into game two, uh, we do have some business to take care of. In a couple days, the next Netrunner set is going to release. It's uh, called Rebellion Without Rehearsal. And there have been a bunch of uh, spoiler cards going around. We're in spoiler season. And so today in particular, a bunch of cards have been given to people who are part of the Netrunner community, but who are also part of... Uh, like marginalized groups who are, you know, part of queer groups, things like that. Uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about that before we get into the uh, the spoiler card. So I am uh, polyamorous. I'm also brown. Um, I'm uh, half Mexican and half Filipino. But also I'm sort of second generation queer. Like I'm polyam, but also I was, uh, my mom is a lesbian. So I've been raised my whole life by a lesbian. And it's like, it's kind of weird how little representation there is, particularly in board games. Like we we just watched a match with uh, Ahasana, who is uh, canonically like trans lesbian, and like that's super cool. But I think it's time to uh, also talk about the um, the card that we have. 
uh, we have one cost NBN assets, Janaina, JK, Dumont, Kindelon. There's a lot happening in that name. Yeah, uh, we're probably just going to call them JK <laughs> from uh, from here going forward. JK, JK. Yeah, JK. Um, so they are an academic clone. When your turn begins, you can place three credits on this asset. You can click and add the asset to add this asset to HQ. And when you do, you take all credits from the asset, and then you can install a card from HQ. So I've had a bit more time to look at this than you have. What what are your initial thoughts on this? It feels like it's I, I like the ambiguity between the horizontal and vertical space. It like does something on uh, asset spam. Like if you if you played this out face down and you res it, you've just earned two credits. Yeah. Um, I guess you have to click to get the two credits, uh, but it, it feels like it it can participate in these kinds of uh, horizontal decks, especially if you're scoring. Gosh. What's that brutal one that you always hate to see get scored? It gives tags when you trash the assets. Oh yeah, uh, Oppo Research. Uh, no, oh agenda. never, no sorry, the, the agenda. Line. Yeah. Um, oh man, I should know this too. I know what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, um, you want to sit back and get it charged up, so it feels like it takes place in a in a vertical deck. Uh, it's got some tempo on it. Uh, getting to install a card at the same time that you're bouncing it back and getting the money. It feels a little bit like deck grease, so it's not like a, a central bomb or whatever uh, that's, that you're going to build a deck around. So if you're playing it uh, vertical, like if you're putting this in your server, it kind of feels like it's it's sort of like a weirdo Nico campaign in a way. Um because you put it in the server and you let it cook and like the the first turn is not as many credits but then the longer it sits there it like gets three credits three credits and at some point you put it back in your hand and you get the install so it kind of doesn't cost you a card if you sit it out there for two turns that's so many credits yeah that's uh, it's a lot um it's cheap to trash but if you can if you can cook it for a bit it's a, it's a lot of credits yeah so mm -hmm. it, it does seem like it fits much better in those vertical decks um, on its own in a horizontal deck it's not doing much but it, if you have punishment for trashing i could see it pulling weight horizontally so i think something else that's interesting here is the um so you click you put it back in your hand and then you do an install and so you could install the same card again and so i was like trying to think okay what's uh like what cares about installs um, you have NEH where you could create a server with this, res it, pick it up, put it back down, and then you get a card draw by creating another server with this. Obviously, the runner can trash it, but there's that. We can see it splashed into Atea like we just saw. Yeah, exactly. That like Atea likes having stuff to install. And then I was just talking about how like if you put a spin doctor or like a regolith in one of your Atea servers, it kind of takes up the server. Whereas this you install, you get your Atea trigger, and the next turn you pick it back up. The trash cost is so low. Yeah. Yeah, the the it's three influence and it's one trash and it's unique. Like it just there's so much as to like I don't know how much we're gonna see this get splashed. There's yeah, so many in, interesting in play NBN, patterns. I can see it I can see it really making it sparkle. If you can get a strong remote and repeatedly th this really helps you bait them in. Yeah, and there's like the push your luck element on this is like kind of fun to like put this in a server and let it cook and kind of have a feel for like, okay, can can the runner like get in and trash this? Is it worth it for them to get in and trash this? Like how many credits needs to be on this before it's worth it to run through the server? Yeah. There's a lot It'll of It'll definitely like, be fun there and there's a lot of math to be done on whether it's worth uh running without the push your luck aspect. Like does it make sense in any NEH to just slap this down for two credits and then you're using it to get your next NEH trigger? Maybe? Probably? Or um, maybe you have a Tranquility home grid in your server and then you like put this down, get two credits off the Trank grid. Next turn, you res it, you get two credits off of it, you pick it up, put it back in your hand, install Ooh. it back down, and you get your Trank grid trigger again. 
yeah, like you were saying, there's a lot of different play patterns that it could potentially fit into. Which maybe you could have done it because I was willing to cut because you just didn't have the money to run. All right, and we're back with game two. All right, let's do this. This is still a uh, uh, Swiss round two of the uh, West Coast uh, Nationals uh, 2023. We've still got Arasana, the tax on Arasana instead of Z. And then we're looking at uh, Asa Group, Asa Group uh, on Z side. Six months later, form a carry band, riot. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that is... Uh, I saw people message you in the Discord. It's like, we're so sorry for your loss, former carry. I did pretty decently with it at Cascadia, and I'm sad to see it go. It, um, it was around for so long, it existed, and it didn't have anything, and it finally got a moment to show its wings as former carry once Managarm came out and they reworked the run sequence, and they had to nip it in the butt. Yeah, so were you playing this ID at the uh, at Nationals? Yeah, I played this ID at Nationals and at Cascadia. I did Asa with Managarm and Formicary and Stegadon, and it was glorious. Awesome. So yeah, maybe we're going to see that here. <laughs> well, so far, we see a hedge fund in Z's deck, and that tells us almost nothing about uh, what the strategy is here. Always a good open, though. Yeah, is that is that a stegadon? I think that's a stegadon. I think that's a stegadon on the table behind ice for turn one. Okay, so I think we gotta draw hedge and stall. I see drafter. Not sure what else is in there. Yeah, it's funny. This is this is actually some something of a similar matchup the other direction. Magnet is exactly what you want to have against Arasana. Yep. Yeah, no slap vandals for you. Tax got a lot of good stuff in his hand. We see Dreamnet coming down maybe. I saw Lily Pad in there. There's a creative commission. Okay, we see the dream net. Yeah, and creative. Get the credits back. It kind of sucks to put down dream net and not run with it the same turn. Yeah, centrals are wide open too. Oh, I love it. Early jam. Yep. I mean, that, that's our second one. is going to pay a lot of money this game. I'm hoping. It interacts really well with, uh, I guess we're probably not seeing the the blue blop beat suite. That is not mm -hmm. what it's called. Uh, echo, echo. <laughs> yeah, pulse, harmonics. Harmonics, yeah. There we go. Okay, now we're starting to po poke open centrals, so. Uh, a lot of those have like on res effects. We're probably not seeing that set. Um, a blade of barrier is huge with Stegadon. You get to use the on res thing once you're Multiple in threat three. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Gatekeeper is fabulous with it. Man, Tack raking in the credits. Yeah, just money, money, money. This is the kind of gas that runs out. All right, my guy. Mandatory. How do you follow up the quick Stegadon? You really want money now. Yeah, I was gonna say we we, we got our uh, got our big open. Now what do you do with now that you've scored a Stegadon? Second remote when you're this poor, and you don't have anything happening behind the magnet, which is the best anti arasana tech in the game. That other card has to be something that Z wants long term. I also, I, I'm not seeing like Rashida. I, Rashida would have gone behind the magnet, right? Yeah, I think so. So the previous game did take a while. So there's any chance that this is going to be a pretty jammy game just to try to get agenda points on the table before time is called. But I agree. Yeah, if you, if you had something that was important to jam, you would jam it behind the magnet. 
uh, maybe wage workers then? I can see it being wage workers. Yeah, that makes sense. All that slap vandals found a home. Couldn't stick to magnet. I'm assuming that's a drafter on R and D. Oh, it's a Maryland. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Was that pinhole? Why did that did that get run? And just no res. Uh, I think so. And we got the we got the re install, which got the lily pad draw, and then also got the uh, dream net draw. So. Mm. Yeah, tax uh, got a lot of econ going quickly. Lily pad's actually like a big tempo hit, uh, putting it on the table. Four is a lot for for a draw now and then. Yeah, we get to res the Maryland, but still not that much money right now. There's the wage workers. And that goes behind the magnet. Fully off, okay. Oh, yep, yep. I think we're just seeing a lot of credits. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely what they needed. Z gained four for it? Uh, I think five. Oh, that makes sense. Spending one for it, gaining six. Okay, I believe that is a conduit alt art. You sure it's not leech? I know, it does look like a worm, doesn't it? It does. It's data. My brain was just telling me it's data sucker. Oh, yeah. Conduit makes sense, though. Oh, interesting. We we don't bounce off of the uh, Tatubola in this matchup. Sacrifice the Slap Vandal to the swap. Yeah, Tak just really wants to get in there. Why isn't there any counter on Conduit or Leech? Either one would have gotten a counter. I think we're still... Oh, we're still in the same run. And that's the Asa trigger to put a second ice. Got it. Yeah, swaps or installs, so we get the install and then we get the second install. Uh -oh. Stick it on steel. You don't feel as bad about that after already scoring one. Okay, and we do see a counter. You're confident that's conduit? Uh, I, am, I am not confident, but I, I think it's conduit. <laughs> it makes more sense. I don't see leech very often in Arasana. Catch yeah. Con and Simul Chip. Would have been nice to have an Enviro testing. Do we see Wage Workers fire this turn? Um, We're thinking about install, install, install. Okay, we have our first two installs. Yep. Well, that's, I guess that's from one click. Because of the uh, Asa trigger. Yeah. But we're not confident. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. And time's ticking, yeah? Yeah, I think so. It's so tense when you're down to 15 minutes and you have a whole new game. 
Yeah, especially if you're down a game. That's okay. So we don't have the uh, we we don't trigger the wage workers. Feels like a four two to me. You want to get points on the board. You're 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 itching to do it quickly. You've got your wage workers out. You're ready. Let's get an agenda score. Yep. Very familiar. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, very, getting very familiar with this Arasana trick of uh, pop the gachapon on the uh, corpse turn. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you were gonna say. Um, I'm curious if there are any really interesting interactions between Stegadon and Slapfan. Stegadon derezes another piece of ice to give all icebreakers minus two. Mm -hmm. Slap Vandal is what a six? Yeah, it's six. So if there's any five or six strength ice, suddenly Stegadon makes uh, Slap Vandal a lot less worthwhile. It can't oh, man. boost. That is that is a very good point. Yeah, in the last game against Dateo, we saw a a, a brawn. Brawn is six strength, and that would be uh, that would be a pretty big one. Yeah. Okay. Pincha Sao on R and D. Uh, that leads me towards thinking we're more working with a deep dive here. I don't think we know what the ice is on R&D. We saw what, Tatu Bola put that innermost there, and then we got an Asa trigger on the other one. So the outermost could be Tatu Bola, right? Yeah, Couldn't Tatu Bola bounce itself back and then get Asa out? Yeah, it can. It's it's pretty likely. It's it, it's reasonably likely that it's a Tatu Bola on the outermost. We haven't seen Drafter, so probably that innermost is Drafter. And then I don't know what the second one is, so I think I need to run sooner rather than later and hope that nothing kills me. So let's... Um, draw a card. Yep, that daily cast is going to do me a lot of good this game. Uh, then we're going to... Daily cast strong. I guess we're going to do it. We're going to make a conduit. I think I saw a turbine in hand. So, Not yeah, confident. To... looks like... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, mean, I also saw a turbine. Yeah, there's the outermost Tatsubola. That's okay. definitely a turbine. So, Yeah, we lost our slap vandal, so I, th I think you just bounce off this maybe. You definitely don't want to repeatedly lose all of your slap vandals to the same tattoo bola. <laughs> the uh, turbine suggests that there's a real fracture in here, though. Okay, we're going to pop SMC. Okay. Uh, and I'm seeing an, a yeah. stack search. No, you're not pulling out another slap vandal. <laughs> Are we? Tell me. <laughs> pop the SMC for the slap vandal. Uh, On the innermost. Oh, oh. And then I'm going to How are we getting past the tattoo ball up? Simul chip for the. <laughs> what? So. What is happening? <laughs> SMC for the uh, SMC for one slap vandal and simul chip for the other. Uh huh. I'm with you. Is there no ice in hand? Oh. Um, Asa can't swap it. Asa is really ice hungry because you want to get it on the remotes for fully op, and then you don't have as much for your centrals. That is brave if that's the read that Tak had. Uh oh. Okay. And now we're seeing two because that is conduit. Um, that one, yeah. uh, 
Uh, this gets a counter. Six credits, and we didn't see a res on the second ice. I guess Z is planning to trash that ice to get rid of the slap and the pinch's house, so didn't think it was worth resing. Still, if it were drafter, it would have gotten one fire. Yeah. So we were thinking that the uh, the far remote was a 4-2, potentially. So. Oh, is this another? Yeah, it looks like a run back. Why is it res the second time and not the first? Oh no, I spent a credit for this one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you can't break this, but I'll get my fully out back. Yeah, great, great. Oh, there's that drafter fire brought fully out back to hand. Know this? Yep. You know this? Yep. One, two, and three. That's a steal. Game. It's Vitruvius. No, that's um. That was. I don't think. Oh, and there's the. And the, what was, what was the ice yeah, it's luminal. Oh, but did time happen? I think so. I think they went to time. Yeah. yeah gotcha. So. Oh, that explains the run back. <laughs> no, it was a good game. Though. You definitely had that game, like with the conduit, like. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's a rough second game. I don't think you would have. Yeah, it's always tough when you have to play a game like very fast under the pressure of time. But uh, yeah. talk gets the sweep here. What I was really disappointed with was um, I had a biotic in hand. Oh, nice. And I drew it was that 4 2. You were right. Oh. I could have scored it out. Yeah, had the, had the wage workers and the 4 2, yeah. and apparently a biotic in hand as well. <laughs> Very prepared. <laughs> yep. But just yeah. didn't have the time. 